tic-tac-toe, a three by three grid. We have O's, we have X's. I wrote some AIs, let's play against them. I'll be playing as the O's, the AI will be the X's. Let's start with easy. So easy just goes randomly. It's pretty easy to defeat. All right, let's step it up a notch. Let's go up to medium. So medium is still choosing randomly, but it's also checking if you are about to win. And if you are, it'll block your move. And it'll also check if it's about to win. And if it will, it'll make that move. Still, it could be better. Let's step it up to hard. So hard will always want to go in the middle first, as most people do. And after that, it'll start taking the corners. And as you can see, it's still possible to defeat it by tricking it and making a play that opens up two possible ways for you to win. And of course, on every turn, it's checking if it's about to win. If it is, it'll take that win. All right, now let's go to impossible. It's called impossible because you can't beat it. Why can't you beat it? It's using the Minimax algorithm. This AI simulates every future possible board state. It simulates every possible future move and assigns a score to that. And it determines what's the best move to make based on all future possibilities. And as you can see, especially on the first move, it takes a while to calculate. It's taking around four seconds for this algorithm to run and make the first move. So here's the actual code in GDScript for the Minimax algorithm. I wrote some helpful comments to explain what's going on at each step. And as you can see, it's actually recursively calling itself to calculate all the future possible scenarios, all the future possible board states. So the Minimax algorithm only works with a perfect information game. What does that mean? Um, a perfect information game is where all players have the exact same information. No one has hidden cards like you would have in poker. Everyone can see the state of the board at all times, and that's the only information they need to know in order to win. And further than that, in order for it to be practical, the game cannot be too complex. So tic-tac-toe only has nine spots on the board, and each spot can only be in three states. It's either empty, it has an X, or it has an O. And so we can calculate how many possible board combinations we can have from that. So that would be three to the ninth. So there's 19,683 possible combinations. So there's other perfect information games such as chess and go. And you can, while you can theoretically use the Minimax algorithm, you in, in practical terms, you would have to limit how deep it goes. You probably couldn't calculate the entire game because the game's just far too complex. Uh, for chess, that'd be 10 to the 120th. And for Go, which has a board of 19 by 19, that's three to 361. These numbers are just far too large uh, for computers to calculate at least in a reasonable amount of time. If you want to learn more about the Minimax algorithm, there's a really good article here. I'll link it in the description, and it goes over more about the theory and on how it calculates a score for each step and how it ends up choosing the most optimal solution. And if you're interested in making a board game in Godot or seeing the algorithm uh, written in GDScript, go ahead here to my website. I'll link that in the description as well. Go ahead to the bottom of this page, and there's a button right here. You can download this Godot project and see how it works. And as usual, like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.